out of the box, Kubernetes is incredibly vulnerable. I mean, there are really no restrictions at all by default. If you deploy pods, you can use the default service account, which that gets compromised. So does everything else in your environment. There's no security context that you have to use by default. Pods can talk to other pods regardless of what namespace they're in. Service to service communication is unencrypted. Everything, it's actually kind of a mess. So what I wanna do is I wanna take some time to do a cool little video here on how we can use Metasploit to uh, maybe mess around with Kubernetes a bit ethically, of course, but no, really, we're gonna use Metasploit. Metasploit has a Kubernetes framework, which is really cool. Um, and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how you can you know, wiggle your way in there. All right, so first things first, I have my Kali box up and running here. I'm just gonna look up Metasploit, put in my super secret password. All right, and then if I do search Kubernetes, you can see the whole Kubernetes framework here. Now, before we actually start getting into any environments, I'm gonna open up VS Code here and scrolling down a bit, what we wanna do is we wanna try to infiltrate via a current secret, okay? And by secret, I mean a token. Now, if I run kubectl get sa, all namespaces. I got a bunch of stuff deployed here, but really what I care about is this line right here. Notice how there are no tokens associated, or rather secrets associated with any of the service counts, and that's okay. But if we run kubectl get secret, we'll see a couple here, but really actually the one that I kind of care about, because at the end of the day, this secret via cube system, oop, forgot to put the N here. There we go. Now, one of these may be um, the best way more or less that I can get into the system because they're in the cube system namespace. The cube system namespace, if we go ahead and we take a look at the pods, these are the, and this is an Azure uh, AKS cluster, so Azure Kubernetes service cluster running. These are where all of like the system related pods are running. Okay, things like the CNI and core DNS and all that good stuff. Kube proxy, right? Metric server, everything. So if I just run again, kubectl, get secrets, namespace, cube system, I'm gonna try to infiltrate via this token. Now, will this work? Will it not work? I'm not sure. Will the process work as in setting a token that has admin rights and then getting into the cluster? Yes, I just don't know if this token will, but we don't even know if we can get this token. How can we get it? Well, let's give it a shot here. Now we got a couple of different options. We can go via the YAML output. So QCTL get secret, right? Output YAML. Unfortunately, again, uh, Kubernetes is not <laughs> all that secure by default. So we can actually do that and see the token. Where is it? Right here in plain text, all right? Now, another way we can do it, if I copy this command here, and we could pull this secret based on base64 plain text. And the reason why is because Kubernetes secrets actually get stored by default as base64 plain text. And if I do this, voila, we can see my secret token, okay? And before you try to hack my cluster, don't worry, this cluster is gonna be deleted long before you get to it. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do, is I am going to head back to Kali. And first things first, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the enumeration here. Okay, now the next thing that I'm gonna need is my Kubernetes endpoint. So by default, Kubernetes has a control plane. The control plane is where the API server exists and that's where we could do everything, right? Anytime we list pods, create new pods, deployments, config maps, doesn't matter. It's always interacting via the API server. Now. One of the other million things that uh, Kubernetes has wrong out of the box is with major cloud providers, AKS, EKS, GK, the control plane, which again, where the API server lives, is uh, public by default. Yes, I said that correctly. Uh, the control plane is sitting public facing by default. So what I can do is I can run use, oh, sorry, set our host and then paste, okay? So this is actually the public endpoint to my AKS cluster. All right, 
Now I'm going to try this token out. And again, I don't know if it's going to work, but again, if I had a token that did work, this is how we would get into the cluster. So I'm going to say set token and let me just pull this token here. So now let's see if it actually works. We'll do a run missing option R port. Ah, you know what? I'm wondering if that's happening because 6443. So 6443, that is the default port for the API server. So let's try that again. There it was. Okay. So a couple of things to remember. <laughs> Number one, you got to set the HTTPS as the endpoint and then the port. All right, we can see here it's running the module. Now notice it's popping out an IP address. This is the public IP address to our endpoint here. And we, uh, we seem to be getting some errors here saying that it's actually not running Kubernetes, but it in fact is. So you know what we're gonna do now? We are going to open up a terminal and have some nmap fun. So let's do nmap and we'll do our endpoint, oops, sorry. We'll do nmap with our endpoint here. I'm gonna pull back the IP address. All right, let's see what information this pulls back for us. All right, perfect. So this is in fact the IP address that I believe we saw before. So you know what we're gonna do now? Let's do the host, except we're going to do the IP address over 6443. I don't think we should have to set the token again, but just in case. All right, let's do a run against this. I believe this was the same thing we saw before, but curious to see how this populates. Yeah, see, Kubernetes invalid API does not appear, appear to be running a Kubernetes configuration. So that's interesting. So I'm actually looking at the endpoint right now and this is in fact the API server address. And just to confirm this out of curiosity here, let's actually run set our host HTTPS. Now this is actually a local Kubernetes cluster that I have running. All right, let's do a run. Ah, okay. So check this out. Now I ran it against a local control plane. It did see it as Kubernetes, but the token was of course invalid. Okay. So that's interesting. Really good to know. It appears that Azure, and yes, this was done ethically. That AKS cluster is my AKS cluster is doing some sort of block to make it not look like a Kubernetes cluster perhaps. Okay. So maybe in, a, in another video, we're going to see a different way to try to infiltrate our Kubernetes environment. But if you're using Metasploit, you can use that Kubernetes framework and try to get into your own cluster. Make sure it's yours.